Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development and today we're gonna do a quick tutorial how to create a 3D scrolling effect like we was done on the lampensdesign.com so when you see this main title animating in sort of 3D space that's what we'll be looking at today and our final project files will look like this okay so we'll have a css we'll look at the css styling and the data attributes of scroller how to create this effect we'll be using scroller.js one of the most popular scrolling libraries we'll be using it for the animation part of this tutorial if you want to learn more about scroller how the data attributes work and uh, how to be more in control of your scrolling animations, then definitely check out the Parallax Scrolling Masterclass. Alrighty, so what we've got for start is a simple HTML5 boilerplate, CSS, images, and uh, JavaScript folders, and then the default files, which comes from the HTML5 boilerplate. Inside of it, it's nothing else than uh, just a normalize and a main style sheet and our HTML, where we're gonna be putting our HTML elements and then styling it inside of the main CSS, okay? So if we look at the page now, you'll see that it's purely blank page with a start here text, where we'll have our button. Okay, so let's go first to the HTML and create the button, get rid of this text, and uh, we'll create the first container which we call, we're gonna call it my box. So let's call it my box. Expand it using Emmet and then uh, site A will be the label of the first site. So uh, just to give you a more visual indication of what we're actually building, we'll have two sites. One is the A, which will be facing down on a page load and the site B will be visible. So we firstly style this and then the slide uh, side B. Okay, so let's go back into here and we'll need to give it some uh, style. So inside of our style sheet, target the my box uh, element, and we're gonna give it a width, 170 pixels. We're gonna center it, so we'll need a margin a zero and auto. We're gonna give it some nice padding. So 10 pixels and zero. Background color will be nice uh, red. Nice, I hate tomatoes red color. So that's a D7373F22. Double two and typing double three, nice. Okay, color will be white just to make it readable. And we'll give it a position relative, okay? Because we'll need that for positioning the other label absolute inside of it, okay? So I'll explain this a little bit later if you're not familiar with the how the position relative absolute work. And uh, if we preview this in the browser, you'll see that we've got a side A nicely styled. Okay, so let's style the number two slide or side. So that will be the side facing the screen on the page load. So that will be my box and we call it B. I call it side A and B, but you can call it whatever you want. And again, inside of it, we'll have also a span this time and this will be side B, okay? So we'll have a simple markup for the second side, my box B with a span with our label, okay? We'll need to style this one as well. So we're gonna go again to the style sheet and after my box, we'll target a my box B. Again, we're gonna give it a width 170. We're gonna this time, as I said, position it absolute. Absolute and top uh, left. Top zero, left zero. Okay. And then the span inside of it will have the actual style. So my box B span will turn it into a display block because as you know, span is a display inline by default. So display block padding will be the same as, as the original red button, so 10 pixels and zero. And then we'll give it a nice border, simple border, one pixel with the same color as here. And solid. And the background color for this one will be 
white. So keep it white and we'll change the color to the red one as well, okay? So what we've got here is a span turned into a block element with the same padding border and background color, okay? So if we preview this in the browser, we should see the side B nicely styled, okay? So we had side A and now we've got side B, okay? So two elements, they at, this, at the moment they're sitting on top of each other. So you can see only one at a time, but that's what we'll fix next. And now let's add some fancy CSS3 transforms and start animating and rotating in 3D, okay? So we'll edit line by line and explaining exactly what, what, what's happening with our object in, in the browser. So first thing we'll do, we'll add, we'll turn our box upside down. So we'll, we'll make sure that it faces down uh, of the browser. So we'll need a transform rotate X minus 90 degrees, okay? So that, that rotates it 90 degrees down. So if we, uh, sublime text crashed on me. So let's relaunch it. And if I preview this in the browser, you won't see anything, okay? Don't stress, don't panic. This is what uh, happens in the browser when you start playing with 3D rotations, okay? So especially when you do 90 degrees because now it's facing down, okay? So we look at this my box and you see a rotate transform X 90 degrees, okay? So this probably is facing exactly down. That's why you don't see anything, okay? So if we reduce the angle, you'll see that it's actually moving 90 degrees makes it invisible sort of thing. And uh, the other thing we'll need to do is to add transform style preserve 3D, okay? This affects the child element. So we wanna make sure that any nested elements inside of our MyBox will keep the 3D orientation and uh, location as well. So this is very important if we want this MyBox B to behave with the same 3D uh, space, within the same 3D space, okay? So we add transform style preserve 3D. And the other thing we'll add is a back face visibility hidden, okay? So this is this is a CSS property which makes this element invisible if it's not facing the screen, okay? So let's make it more visual in a browser. So again, if I review, if I reload the browser and if we would change again the angle to something more than 90 degrees. Now we turn the back face visibility from hidden to visible. And you see when it's not facing the screen, means when it's on the opposite side of the 3D space, then uh, it's visible by default, but that's what we wanna change. That's why we're adding a back face visibility hidden, okay? So when it's not facing the screen, we want it to be invisible. Okay, so these are the three properties, the 3D properties added to our my box, and now we'll add stuff to the B side. Okay, so what we want to do with the B side, we want to also transform it, rotate X minus 90 degrees. So we'll copy and paste it from the previous element. And what we want to do on this one, we also want to change the point around this, around which this element rotates, okay? So we'll do that by setting the transform, transform origin point to center top. Okay, so this will soon make sure that the my box B rotates around center top point. And then we'll also include transform rotate on the span inside of it, okay? So this one, the value here will be 180 or 180 uh, minus negative, I mean. So this is, this will have the same result. So I'll show you in a browser. Okay, so this is it. This is how we've got it now rotated facing the screen. And to prove you that the 180 or negative 180 on the span has no effect or has the same effect, is uh, basically trying to make it face the screen. So if we would turn this off, you'll see that it's upside down. Okay, so 180 or minus 180 has the same result. 
cool. Now we've got everything set up in the HTML and CSS and we can start adding the scroller and the data attribute. So at the end of the HTML, just before the closing tag, closing body tag, we'll include a scroller. So I'll just copy and paste from my other project. What this does is uh, just references the scroller JavaScript library. And then in this script tag, we initiate the scroller. Okay, so you can download scroller from GitHub. I'll link to it in the show notes. And this is how you turn scroller on. The next thing we'll do is we'll add a data attribute. That's how scroller works. So scroller takes data attributes from HTML elements and then animates the properties, the CSS properties based on that. Okay, so the first one we wanna do, we wanna rotate, we will be rotating this element. Okay, so we'll go minus 20%. Uh, bottom and this will be transform rotate x and minus 90 degrees okay so this is the style of our my box when the bottom of my box is 20 percent at the bottom of the page okay so the data attributes might be a little bit confusing so maybe download the scroller cheat sheet and get understanding how it actually works a little bit better. This one, it will be minus 50 and the value for the rotation will be zero. Okay, so zero degrees. And this will be the data attributes for it. So we're animating from minus 90, which will be on the page load. And once the element is in the middle of the page, which is the 50% bottom, then the rotation will be zero. Okay, so this is the data, the scroller data attributes we'll need for our effect. And then in a CSS, we'll just need to extend the size of the page. So let's uh, make this body a height, 4,000 pixels. Just if we've got enough space and make the top padding 100 viewport height. Okay, which makes it, makes our content start below the fold regardless how tall the browser window is. So it stands for viewport height. So 100% of the viewport height is the padding top. And that should give us enough space for our animation. So if we view this in the browser, we won't see anything because everything starts just under the viewport. And if we scroll up, we don't see any animation. Okay, what's going on? Okay, I didn't refresh the site. I didn't refresh the page. Okay, so now we've got a slide B or side B rotating, starting 20% from the bottom. And when it's in the middle, the side A is visible. Okay, so that's the, that's how scroller rotates it. So in, in inside of the web developer tools, you can see the rotation animating from nine, minus 90 to zero. Okay, so pretty cool effect. As you can see, there is no perspective. It doesn't look like a 3D. So when, when you've got an object and it's in 3D, it should be a little bit distorted, okay? So that's, a, that's what we need to fix in our CSS right now. And to fix this, we're gonna go back to our HTML and we'll wrap everything inside uh, another diff. So we'll create a diff called perspective. Okay, so we'll call it perspective. We'll wrap this around our button. Okay, tab everything in. So we've got another container, which we will set the perspective on. Okay, so we'll go back to our CSS just under the my box B. And that's where we add the perspective. Okay, so perspective open and closing brackets and the CSS will be also perspective and the value will be 800 pixels. Okay, so this defines how the child elements which are transformed with 3D will be displayed in a space. Okay, so this doesn't affect perspective diff itself. It's uh, It only applies to the child elements. Okay, and the 800 is the distance how these elements are transformed. Okay, so let's see how this shapes it up in a browser. Okay, so as you can see now, the corners are slightly distorted, it means that they look much more like a 3D element, okay? 
the bigger the number I think the less this is distorted so uh, if we give it a hundred you see how much bigger that is distorted and if we give it a higher value like 1800 then you'll probably see just a slight distortion okay so yeah usually numbers between 600 and 800 works the best so even 600 would work fine really depends how how uh, how your design fits this uh, effect so yeah play with the value something between 800 to 600 works usually pretty well And that's it all from me today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new about CSS, scrolling animations, scroller data attributes. If you enjoyed it and would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, happy coding, happy scrolling. See ya, bye.